Since the release of Insomniac Spider-Man 2 on the PlayStation 5, the game, while being received very positively from a lot of people and selling incredibly well, has also drawn its fair share of criticism, and rightfully so. From its way of handling of certain characters, the way it pushes certain ESG narratives very bluntly, and then on top of that, having Insomniac coming out not long after, and talking about how Miles Morales going forward will be the main Spider-Man for this universe, this game and this company has received a lot of backlash. And because of the backlash to this game, a wider player base has been exposed to the corruption and cancer that is Sweet Baby Inc. And make no mistake about this, Sweet Baby Inc is nothing short of a cancer in the gaming industry. And what are we supposed to do with these types of cancers? Cut it off. <laughs> and that brings us to the Insomniac hacks, which happened, I want to say, about two or so weeks ago as of this recording. And since then, people have been going through the leaked information from those hacks with a fine comb, trying to uncover anything and everything. And of course, we know about the Wolverine game, the X-Men game, all that type of stuff. But here's some more information that has recently been discovered to do with just how much Insomniac is infected with the ESG virus. Insomniac's inclusivity studies, Insomniac's culture studies and protocols, including mandatory Discord sessions with queer, African American, and Asian groups. Oh boy, yep, we're going down there. Now there is this 12-ish, well 12 and a half minute video actually that shows off all this type of nonsense. I'm not gonna play the video on stream because it's 12 and a half minutes of cringe. This is much better suited for a live stream. Well, at least in my opinion. So here's the whole thing here. And now let's just go through and look at some of these main things. Inclusion champions at Insomniac Games. Bruh. Now, what type of people did they speak with? 45 consumers across all communities. Nine Puerto Ricans with five males and four females. And they still got the Puerto Rican flag wrong in the game that had to be patched later. Seven LGBTQ women. Now, I'm not exactly keeping up with all this retardation acronyms, but isn't there supposed to be a plus symbol and an I and a Peter Pan symbol in there at some stage? 13 Afro Latin X people, eight males and five females. Latin X is not a word. Nine African males, four males, five females, seven Korean Americans, two males and five males. Five currently or previously have lived in East Harlem, a mix of gamers and non-gamers ranging from 18 years of age to 49 years of age. I just want to remind everyone that this is to do with a fucking Spider-Man game, by the way. So let's have a look at some of these people. An associate producer of Korean studies, digital media expert and founder of Black Tina Media, okay, which is also an Afro-Latinx expert, again... Latinx is not a word. Now let's just look at this last one here for this, this white woman. Media culture writer for Auto Straddle, which is a magazine for lesbian, bisexual, and queer women. An LGBTQ expert. What is there to expertise in that? I mean, you're an expert in knowing which gender you prefer to sleep with? Right on. So now these are just some uh, photos taken from the leaks. So we have this like mini slideshow here, but here we're at the knife part here. While other media has made strides, video games are stuck in the past, still suffused with stereotypical portrayals. And of course they use GTA San Andreas as their background header. Good afternoon, ball of dope pushers. Grove Street OGs come to do damage. Once again, I want to remind you all, this is for a Spider-Man video game. Now look at this part here. In video games, representation in terms of just seeing these characters is still abysmal, and when they do appear, one-dimensional stereotypical portrayals dominate. Well, wouldn't you say that has more to do with the writers and the people creating these characters and how they're incapable of creating more than just a one-dimensional black character? I mean, for fuck's sakes, they have GTA San Andreas in the header, CJ probably isn't your stereotypical black gang member, is he? The motherfucker steals jetpacks and flies remote control helicopters. It's almost like it's a video game and not meant to be taken super seriously in terms of realism. And now there's a quote here from Justin, who is an Afro-Latinx. Latinx is not a word. It says, I would love to see more diversity in main characters in video games. In video games, there is very rarely biracial characters Bruh. Either they're white or black or Chinese or whatever, they never mixed, and if they are, they never mention it. There's Spider-Man for the PlayStation 4, they have Miles Morales in it, 
but that's pretty much it. Another thing worth mentioning with all this type of nonsense is as part of these leaks that came from the Insomniac hack, we learned how much some of these games cost to create, and the budget for this game, Spider-Man 2 on the PlayStation 5, was like 315 million US dollars or some shit, and it turns out that is cost more to create than any Spider-Man movie, including the recent one with Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield. How this game managed to cost more than that movie, I can tell you how we can cut back and make this game a bit cheaper. How about we start by removing all of this gibberish that we're going through right now. You cut out the ESG virus, you are spending less money, and you're probably going to end up making a bit more money as well. Seems like a win-win to me. It's simple. Now we've got a couple more slides to go through. Now there's this one here. Most diverse characters are regulated to sidekick role rather than granted their own personality. Bruh. And then they have this example on the side where they're talking about Ant-Man and his, and his sidekick Lewis. Now it's all really starting to connect, isn't it? Like don't get me wrong, the pieces were already there and we were able to put it together. But just in case you needed more proof, it's all lining up as to why Insomniac really wants Miles Morales to be their main Spider-Man going forward in this universe. When you look at this type of gibberish, it's all lining up. And let's be absolutely clear about this, it is gibberish. Most black, Latinx, not a word by the way, Asian and queer characters aren't fully fleshed out in enough depth according to the consumers. Instead, they serve as accessories to the lead. What the fuck are you even talking about there? That's ridiculous within itself. Once again, how about you create better characters? There's a starting point right there. But once you start looking at these types of people and their credentials, it's like, hmm, yeah, I don't really have faith in any of them to create a character that is more than just a one-dimensional character that's just there to check the box for inclusivity, representation, and all that other stupid crap that doesn't really make the game better. If anything, it kind of just drags it down a little bit more. This is bizarre. Like, again, they have San Andreas as the header here when CJ Carl Johnson is instantly one of the most recognizable characters in video gaming history. But hey, yeah, well, there's not enough characters out there that aren't recognizable and are just one dimensional. Motherfucker. And then how about you try to create a character that's on par with CJ? But we know these people are incapable of that. Look at some of these quotes here. Queer people's experiences aren't just comic relief or they have a fun little sprinkle on top of everybody else's lives. This is for a Spider-Man video game, by the way, in case you forgot what we're talking about with this. Because of this type of gibberish, it can be forgotten that this was for a Spider-Man game, because what does any of this have to do with making a Spider-Man game? So we've got a spotlight here. Perceptions of protagonist updates. Most consumers appreciate when familiar characters get remade or updated, but only when the story happens through a new lens. Oh, I don't know about that. Whenever we hear the terms updated for a modern audience, we automatically get a bit of a red flag, don't we? And the example they have here is the latest live action Little Mermaid, which is a whole topic within itself, but yeesh. Bad example to use. Getting input from contributors within the community is an automatic shortcut to authenticity. <sighs> Again, this is supposed to be for a video game, a Spider-Man video game. I would much prefer they went through a stack of old comics and tried to find some more obscure type characters that very rarely appeared than kind of give that character some type of Easter egg or spotlight. You know, I think that's the type of things that both gamers and Spider-Man fans would appreciate more as opposed to well, how do we make Miles Morales act more Puerto Rican? You're like, well, here's an idea. How about you start by putting the correct fucking flag up? Now, this little image here might be my favorite part of this whole nonsense here because of how ridiculous here. They have a list of do's and do nots. So on the do's, they have, do have at least, with the word at least underlined, do have at least two queer people, do not have an all white. And then finally, in all capitals, get queer writers. Do get queer writers. Now let's go to the do nots. Make them all white. Do not make them all one dimensional. <laughs> well, there's some things we already covered. Like I said, this whole thing goes for about 12 minutes and I just want to show you the first part here. Guess how they open this thing up. Yep, you guessed it. Wakanda forever. They're talking about authenticity and trying to get the, remove the stereotypes and all that type of shit. And the first thing they have in their, what was this bullshit called, champ inclusion championship video is Black Panther. <laughs> what a world. 